Hi everyone, this is Matthew again, and a very Merry Christmas to you all in this holiday season. So, we did a video on phone watches back in November. Those two watches were fun, but lack seriousness in them. So this time, I'm going to talk about this one, which definitely has to be taken more seriously. And this is the Makib F68 smartwatch. So, why is it more respectable? Well, because this is a product that targets a clearly defined niche. It is made for those who want an actual fitness-oriented smartwatch. So apart from all the cliché that comes with this kind of product, it also provides real-time display on almost every fitness tracking functions. Really amazing product at a very competitive price. So in order to save us time, I'm not going to pronounce all of its features. You can check out the links in the description down below for more details on the subject. So without any further delay, let's talk about my user experience with this one. First of all, why don't we start with the packaging and designs and stuff. So the packaging is definitely a breath of fresh air. I mean, I've seen way too many no-name Chinese products with poor packaging throughout the years, and this is something really different. Regardless of the broken English mark all over it, uh, the box is exemplary for its compact size and smart designs. The branding is really well executed throughout the whole package. I mean, the color and the combination of color and the icons and stuff. Well, this is this looks this looks legit. I have to say. And when it comes to the smartwatch itself, I'll say that pay enough attention to the details. The straps are very easy to set up with their tiny clips. Wearing comfort is nothing that I can complain about. The overall line weight of this thing plus the highly flexible silicon strap makes it very pleasant. And here I would like to give a thumbs up to the design of the dial as well. Well, everything seems to be adequately calculated. I mean, the proportion of all the things on this tiny dial is well balanced. The diameter of the dial makes it fit perfectly on my waist. And when I look at the bezel, I found that the thickness of this thing perfect for a spot watch. Not too thick, nor is it too slim. It's just very comfortable. Well, the build quality is overall acceptable, plus you have the heart rate sensor, which is pushed up just a little bit above the surface of the back, so you don't feel anything strange while wearing it. And here I have to say that adopting a circular dial design is a smart choice because it suits both the gentlemen and the ladies. And about its magnetic charger, which is not to be confused with a QI charger, it looks kind of cute for its small size, but pay attention when you are trying to charge your watch with it. Make sure that pins are actually in contact with the port, otherwise you will end up wasting your time thinking your watch is being charged, while in reality it didn't happen. One thing about the charger is that it is the only switch for turning on your watch, meaning you can only turn on your watch by connecting it to the charger. Not a big deal for me, since this kind of product is supposed to be on all the time. Now why don't we move on to the next part, which is on functionalities and performance. I would like to start with the LCD touchscreen. Although it's only 1.5 inch in size, it only gives clear display even under strong sunlight. Now this is the characteristic that I appreciate very much. The touch control will take some getting used to, as different functions are accessible for swiping the screen in different direction. And sometimes this can be quite confusing for, you know, new users. The little downside is that the positioning of the touch point seems to be less accurate than anticipated, and sometimes the screen doesn't seem to be quite responsive. But luckily, uh, in most cases, it works just fine, and good thing is that you don't have many options on this watch for which you need good positioning. Now let's move on to one of the killer features of this thing, which is the heart rate monitor. In this aspect, it's no doubt more advanced than the Xiaomi Mi Band. As you can see right here, it provides real-time display on your heart rate directly on the display of this watch. So you have two tracking modes available. This is the sports mode, and then you have the health mode. Well, when these two modes are on, as you can see right here, the sensor is permanently lit up. Of course, you can also turn it off by hitting the off switch. And the health mode is for daily use. Compare the readings on the new Mi Band, and the two are not far from each other, actually. But when we switch to sports mode, it's no longer the same. By the way, the sports mode is for tracking faster heart rate while the user is working out. So I try a little jogging session for like 5 minutes, and the difference in the readings started to show. There was a gap of 29. I can assure you that the two readings are captured one after another, so no significant time interval between the two. So up to this point, I've got the impression that the readings in the sports mode is a little bit exaggerated. Not saying that the Xiaomi Mi Band is 100% reliable, but this gap is just a little bit too big. And in both tracking mode, there is a predefined value range for your heart rate as displayed right here. 
So this is determined by the user info that you put in this watch. So be sure to put in the most accurate info about yourself to get the most accurate results. And about speedometer, for this one, I've got the readings from the same jogging session mentioned in the previous part. And the gap in terms of step count seems to be at normal value, which is a little bit more than 3%. So for your information, the Xiaomi Mi Band has an error rate of nearly 10%. So given this, I would say the accuracy of the F68 is still acceptable. Just do the math, you see why. And there's one thing that I like very much about all this tracking function on this watch is that the watch itself can store up to, you know, can store records for up to seven days. So this is very, pretty amazing. Right now, I only got records for two days. So uh, pretty limited, I should say, but anyway, this is very amazing. And about sleep monitor function, it's kind of hard to tell on its accuracy because I can only have very limited information on just one night's sleep. And compared to what the new Mi Band is having, the gap between the two results are way too big for me to reach a legitimate conclusion. But anyway, I don't think I have been having low quality sleep lately, so what the F68 is showing is more convincing. If you are a user of this product, please do share with us your experience on the subject. And moving on with the auxiliary functions, they are mainly, well, essentially the reminder function which employs a vibration motor in the watch. For such a small device, I have to admit that the vibration strength is adequate for users to take notice in most cases. And I have to point out that you cannot answer calls or reply to text message directly while the watch, the call and the text reminder are merely just notification realized by vibration. And there's no way to configure these two functions in the watch. You can only do this by the app, which also means they can only be activated while the watch is connected to your phone. Plus, there's just no way to configure the duration of the vibration. Now, that is the mistake that they shouldn't have made. Also, I'm surprised to see there's only one time configuration for the alarm clock and that's even so in the app. So these are the main downers in terms of functionalities. Talking about the sanitary reminder, well, you can not only configure the duration of the reminder, but you can also set the effective time range within one day for this function. So this is pretty good for people have, you know, nine to five DAX job, I guess. Well, I think it's time to talk about its mobile app now. It is well developed for its functionalities and settings, but the English on it feels just like what we are having on the package and in the quick start guide of this product. Anyway, no biggie, it is still comprehensible. The fact that you can have real-time access to this chart right here is a big plus because it shows how your heart rate changes along with the amount of exercise you take. The traceability of data in the app seems to be another plus on the paper. You can have a comprehensive overlook of your fitness condition in a week, a month, and even a whole year. Now we're talking about long-term fitness management right here. And heart rate monitoring has one complete screen dedicated to it. Very intuitive display. Everything is on the chart and you can even activate the timer below and measure your heart rate in a given duration. So this is a particular useful function when you are on a treadmill trying to get a quick text. In the settings screens, we have the social media notification options where you can, you know, get notified when you have incoming message on your social account, social media account. But I tried this with my WeChat, it didn't work. I guess maybe the firmware of the watch is just not ready yet. And in the user info, page, you have access to all the physical conditions that are required to get the watch to work right. But it looks like what I have entered in the app cannot be synchronized to the watch. Maybe next time the firmware come out, this will no longer be a problem. I mean the new firmware. Now, sorry guys that I can't provide more insight on the app's performance since I only have very limited data and I only try this thing for a very limited time. All I can say is that the app starts out right, but it still has to be improved, including the firmware of this watch right here. About its IP67, which is exactly the same as the Mi Band, it does its job right. Nothing much to talk about it, but again, this is a rating that is only effective against splash. It is not effective against immersion, so don't try to push its limit. And finally, we come to the battery life part. On the paper, they said the battery can last up to one week, and this is clearly a statement that lacks context. For me, I haven't depleted one full charge yet, but for the way I see it, the battery life is encouraging. Now, counting from the time this little kit right here is made, the battery was fully charged and unplugged since 3 p.m. the day before. 
I've had the heart rate sensor on for like six hours. Its Bluetooth has been on for like four hours in total. All notification functions are on while the watch is connected to my phone. Up until the next day, we still have three bars left. Seeing this, I would say that it shouldn't last for less than five days for my usage. Anyway, the screen is small and LCD, so it should outperform similar product that with color screen like this one. Okay, I'm gonna give my quick verdict on this one. I think I will give it a 4.3 out of 5 for its overall attribute. Again, the guys who made this product definitely have a clear version of what niche to cover. And in some way, it looks like they're trying to take on some major players in the big league with their price and their quality price ratio. This one can really get ahead amongst all those Chinese smartwatches for its overall build quality and its ability to get real-time feedback directly on its screen. And if they are willing to work hard and polish the app and the firmware well enough in the future, they might even be able to challenge Xiaomi Mi Band. Anyway, this is a budget smartwatch which I would like to wear on a daily basis, especially when outdoors. Now, come and think about how come this thing does not have a backlight? Whoops. Okay, that will be all for this video and I hope you all enjoyed it. Again, feel free to share and subscribe to our channel. Matthew here, signing out.